Hey guys, this is Colin from Brilliant Labs, and welcome to my HTML, CSS, and JavaScript course. So you may have been sent here by another project that I'm working on. Um, a lot of the times that I start doing a project, it's important that you know a little bit of HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And so I found that I was putting these tutorials in every video, so now I'm just going to make a mini version of those so that I can link to you. So I just want to clarify from the beginning, this is not going to be a full-fledged course. This is just to make you understand sort of what these things are. And then I'm going to be providing links um, where you can go to if you want to learn more yourself. So the whole point here is just to familiarize yourself with them before starting one of my bigger tutorials that sort of expect you to know a little bit more. So with a typical web page, um, HTML and CSS and JavaScript are all used together at the same time. Um, HTML is sort of like the template and then CSS is making the template look good. And then JavaScript is meant to make the template actually do something. Um, so for example, HTML could be creating a button and then CSS would be making the button blue. And then JavaScript would be um, what happens when you click the button. So to start off, I'd like to show you how easy it is to create an HTML page. So we're gonna right click this folder. I just created a, a folder for the project. And then we're gonna go down to new and we're gonna click text document. And I'm just gonna call this HTML tutorial. And then it says .txt, I'm gonna rename it to .html. Now, if you weren't able to actually see the .txt or the .html, you can click view up here, and then you'll see this file name extensions checkbox. You'll notice if I click it, it'll just say HTML tutorial instead of HTML tutorial .html. So you want to make sure that this is enabled and then okay so now we can actually just right click it and open with even like notepad so we can click uh, choose another app and then just scroll down more apps until you see notepad and then now we have our HTML file so let's just type in um, HTML just like this and then you're gonna have an end HTML and then we're gonna have a body tag I'll explain what all this does End body tag and then in our body tag we're gonna put a P which stands for paragraph and we're gonna type in hello world now if we hit control s and then we open this in our internet browser. Um, mine automatically will do this for me, but if it won't do it for you, you can click open with and then like Google Chrome. So now if we take a look at it, you'll see it says hello world. And it was that easy to get this up and running. Now Notepad is not the way to go. Um, so I recommend downloading Visual Studio Code. So if we go to Google and we type in Visual Studio Code and then click this download, and if that didn't pop up for you, you can just copy the link in this URL. And then just download Visual Studio Code. And then if we open up Visual Studio, we'll see this. So I have a bunch of projects that I was working on. I'm going to click Open Folder. And then I'm going to click this HTML-CSS-JavaScript tutorial and click Select Folder. And now you're going to see HTML tutorial.html. And if you look at the file, you'll notice that things are color coded and this makes things way easier. It'll also autofill things for you. So if I type in like P and then NP, it'll just automatically create the ending bracket for me. Okay, so let's sort of start going over um, what this HTML means. Now, if you don't have Visual Studio Code for some reason at this point, that's completely fine. You can keep using Notepad. Um, it's just obviously a lot harder to use and a lot harder to organize. So we've got this HTML tag. That's just telling our browser when it's loading HTML that we're using HTML. So another thing that we're gonna add is a head tag. So our head tag will contain things that are related to HTML that the browser needs to know, but it's not displaying it to you. So if we go back to our tutorial, the body is everything from here down to here, the top left down to the bottom right. So there's an entire white space is what the body is. So if you want something to display inside of this giant square or rectangle, depending on your monitor, um, you're gonna wanna put it in the body tag. Now, 
if we go to head and we type in something like title, we can type in HTML tutorial. And now if we refresh our page, you'll see up at the top, we have this HTML tutorial. Now there's other things that we're going to be using in the head. So when we end up including a CSS file and a JavaScript file, uh, we will have to include that in the head. Um, other things that you can put in the head are like uh, Google keywords. So if you type this in um, to Google, it will help pop up your page. So basically, you don't really need to worry too much about the head right now. Um, you're pretty much going to be working in the body. So we've got our P tag, and now I want to start teaching you what comments are. So in code, um, you don't always know what things are. Like this is very obvious what this is. It's a paragraph tag that says hello world. But once things start getting really complicated, it's hard to sort of sort through it all and remember it. So we add comments above and below code in order to say like, this is what this code is supposed to be doing. So if you type this in, and it should auto populate that for you, you'll notice it's green. Now everything inside of the green uh, will not actually render in the body. So nobody will ever see this unless they inspect your HTML. So it is hackable, but um, nobody will typically ever see this. Um, it doesn't render, it's just for people viewing the code. So I'm gonna actually be putting notes in the comments in order for you guys to kind of remember what things are without having to take notes yourself. So just copy mine. Um, so P stands for paragraph and displays text. Now there's a bunch of other tags. So if we go down to like A, um, A stands for anchor tag. A stands for anchor and links us to another site. So um, we're going to type in click here. And then if we reload our page, you'll notice it says click here, um, but there's nothing different in the paragraph. And the reason why is because we now can give it the option to link to another site. So if we type in like href equals, and then in quotes, we're going to type in HTTPS colon slash slash www.google.ca and then save. Now, if we refresh our page, you'll see this click here link. And if we click it, it'll bring us to google.ca. Now, I don't like that it didn't open in a new tab because that's a little bit annoying. So we're going to type in target equals underscore blank. And then we're going to refresh our page, click here, and it opens in a new tab. So now we can just jump right back to our tutorial. So for a lot of these things, you're probably like, what does that even mean? Target equals blank. Well, when I even was doing this tutorial, I forgot how to open a new tab. So I just Googled how to open a new tab on the anchor tag. And I found a website that told me to type in this. So you don't necessarily need to memorize all of it. You just need to be able to sort of Google your way to your answers. Um, so that's what's really important here. If you don't completely memorize something, that's, that's okay. So next up, we're going to have a button. And I'm just going to put this is a button. And then we'll refresh our page and you'll see there's a button. Now remember, it's not going to do anything because we don't have any JavaScript. So this is just the template. Um, but I don't like how the button is next to the click here. So I'm going to go back to our code and type in BR. And I don't remember what that stands for, but it essentially makes a new line. Um, so if we type in two of the BRs, It'll make two new lines and then everything will be a little bit more organized. So we're going to keep doing this for our future inputs. And we're going to type in input type equals text and then close the input. And now if we save and we reload our page, you'll see this text box and I can type in like this is text. So you're going to notice um, that there's this dark blue and dark blue means a tag, but this light blue means like a property. 
So the input box has multiple properties. Uh, one of them is its type. So we can set it to text, but we could also set it to like password. And then if we refresh our page and we type into it, it would uh, give us password characters. Um, we can also type in number. And again, you don't need to memorize this. You can find all this online really easily. And now if I go to type in a letter, it won't actually do anything. But if I type in a number, it will. Now it will type in E, I guess, because I think that counts as a number in some mathematical scenarios, but you get what I'm trying to say. So we're going to go back to text. And it's important to remember that these light blue things are properties and um, tags will have multiple of them. So another property that the input tag has is called placeholder. And here we can type in like enter your name. And now if we refresh our page, you'll see it says enter your name. But once we type in our name, uh, it goes away as placeholder should. Um, also with the input tag, the thing that you're typing into or like when I typed in Colin there, cause that's my name, um, that's actually setting the value of the input tag. So if I type in value and then set it to like Colin and then I save, if I refresh the page, you'll notice that Colin is automatically there. And this is important because later on when we're in JavaScript, uh, we're going to want to reference uh, the input's value if we want to get its value. So I don't feel like I necessarily need to take notes here. Like I can't really type in this is a button. Um, but feel free to start taking your own, especially with like the input type equals number and uh, all that stuff. So the next thing that we're going to do is display an image. So I have this test.png that I just found off of Google. You can just go to Google Images and download any image. And then make sure it's in your project folder. Now, if we go back to our HTML tutorial, we can type in IMG, stands for image, and then source src equals test.png. And you can see because we're in Visual Studio Code, test.png is recognized over here in the sidebar. And if I type in test, it'll automatically know what I'm trying to do. So I can click enter, and the bracket, and then save. If we refresh, you'll see this test image here. Um, we forgot to add our BRs. Okay, so remember if you wanna make the image bigger or anything like that, we're gonna get into that in CSS. Same as like if I type in Colin here, we could make this um, blue uh, and we will get into that in CSS. So we are going to add two more uh, new lines and then we're going to create a drop down so we're going to type in a paragraph tag and it's going to say favorite food colon and then we're going to type in select and then it'll end it for us we're going to hit enter and then we're going to type in option pizza option ice cream oh whoops and then option potatoes because who doesn't love some french fries then we're going to refresh our page again and you're going to see this favorite food and this drop down um, so as you can see we're just creating a bunch of different inputs here so when we start uh, building whatever project you're going to work on after this at least you'll have this as reference we're going to add our two BRs and then we're going to type in an unordered list and then we're going to type in LI which stands for like list item. I'm just going to type in item one and then we can copy this and make like item two, item three. Now if we refresh our page you'll see um, that there are bullet points. And if you change this from unordered list to ordered list, and then we refresh our page, you'll see that it is numbered, which looks a little bit confusing because we numbered them ourselves too, but that's okay. We'll change it back to unordered. And now finally, we're going to go to Google 
and we're going to type in W3Schools HTML. And then we're going to click this. And again, if you can't find that link, just type in what's up here. Um, and then you're going to click the Start Learning HTML Now. So W3Schools is a really great resource for when you're trying to learn new things. And the reason why I don't want to do an in-depth HTML tutorial is because it's really just trial and error, and you're not going to need to remember it all anyway. So you're going to use this site to reference things. Um, just play around. Like it says H1 tag here, you can type in that and see what it does. There's a bunch of different, a bunch of different options. So I hope that I've kind of got you familiar with the idea of what HTML is. Um, and I'm actually going to copy this link. And in our HTML tutorial, I'm going to type in P for more tutorials, click, and then um, I'm going to nest an anchor tag inside. So don't get too confused by this, but then we're going to type in in our P tag, A target equals underscore blank, href equals, and then I'm going to paste that link in. And then I'm going to type in here. So what are we doing exactly? Um, well, you can nest HTML tags. So we have a paragraph tag, but we only want the here word to be a link. So um, once we get to that word, we create an anchor tag that surrounds it. So now if we refresh our page, you'll see for more tutorial, should probably add an S to that. For more tutorials, click here. And then it brings us right to the page. So thanks for checking out my HTML tutorial. Uh, next, we're going to be moving on to CSS.